Welcome to Tech Results with Amiru. In this video, we are going to learn how to extract data from MySQL by using ODBC driver in SSIS packages. So this does involve a couple of steps that you have to take. And you, I will say, yeah, go through the video and gain some knowledge because this is very important and often people miss a lot of steps. First of all, what you need to do, you need to download the ODBC driver, 32-bit or 64, whatever you want to use it, and then uh, you are going to install. So this installation, what you are going to do, you are going to do on your dev machine where you are building your SSIS package. Also, you will be doing uh, the installation of this uh, driver on your uh, UAT, QA, prod, all way, everywhere, because uh, once uh, you are using this ODBC driver in the SSIS package, this has to be present on the upper environment so where you are going to deploy your SSIS package. Now, next part is that you're going to go ahead and install the driver and then create the ODBC DNS entry. This uh, step also has to be done on your uh, local machine where you are creating the SSIS package and also on your QA, UAT, and prod. Because once you deploy your package, it need to know which your entry, DNS, DNS entry need to use. So it should be exactly the same name or you have to make some changes to adjust according to your environment. Next, uh, you are going to ask your uh, MySQL DBA to create a user and provide permissions. Um, tell him uh, the machine from which uh, this user will be used. Uh, so he will, uh, because in uh, MySQL, uh, it does not work like a SQL server where you create the user and he can be accessed from any machine. Uh, in MySQL and MariaDB, you have to specify from which machine this user will access the data or they can open for everybody. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but uh, mostly in uh, my cases, what I have seen, uh, we provide specific uh, permission uh, to use this user from specific machines. Uh, that uh, helps in uh, building a secure system. Now, finally, you're gonna go to Visual Studio and create your SSIS package to use the ODBC driver to download the data from the MySQL. So first of all, let me show you what tables or database we are gonna use from MySQL. Here is my database called TechRazors. And uh, let me make it a little bigger so you can see. So TechRazor IT, that's our database and we have created a table called customer. This has uh, only one record. This says one, I'm in MySQL, no more records. And uh, we are have uh, this users created. So one of the user is called the uh, TB user. So this is a system uh, table that provides the list of the users. Uh, so this is what your DBA is gonna see. He's gonna create the user and he's gonna see, and then uh, he's gonna see from which servers this user can access the database. So in my case, I'm on local host, so it's gonna be local host. It's all good now. Now once he says you're good to go, but we are gonna we are gonna go to the ODBC or somebody's gonna go to the ODBC and create for us. So we are gonna type ODBC and it's gonna bring us ODBC data sources 32-bit and 64. In my case, I'm gonna use the 32-bit. I'm gonna bring this pen right here so you can see and uh, also yeah it's a uh, visible it's all right so we are going to go ahead and create a user dns uh, and i'm going to hit uh, add now once you hit uh, add in my case it's opening a window on the different machines so it's all right so you i just moved it here for you so now you have to select uh, the driver in my case uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to go all the way down here not oracle i don't have oracle actually i just installed oracle drivers but I have to use my SQL ODBC 8.0 NC driver. How did I download? I have the link in the notes. So I went to this folder uh, URL and here these are all available. So you see right there 86, 64 bit MSI installation. So you can do that. You have all those different options available. So if you install, it's gonna install 32 bit and six, this is a 32 bit one. Okay, so you can download. Now we are here in ODBC and uh, we are selecting my ODBC driver, NC driver. Okay, hit uh, next. And now you will be providing your name for the data source name. In my case, I'm gonna call it SSIS link. Okay, so we would know that and I'm going to call it my SQL SSIS link. And here I will provide the server name. In my case, it's a local host. And uh, in your case, whatever the server name your uh, DBA will provide, uh, the port has to be provided here, 3306 or any port uh, your uh, MySQL is using. Now you are gonna provide the username. So your DBA has to provide you this username and password. Provide the password. And here we are gonna say database. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm saying tech browser IT. This table, uh, this database has only one table. Test connection and it's successful. Now it's all looking good here. Hit okay. 
and hit okay. Now we are gonna go to our favorite uh, tool, it's called Visual Studio, where we create all different assets, I use packages. Uh. Now you can go to new and uh, project, and uh, go to the SSIS project, and uh, I'm gonna say my SQ project, okay? Hit uh, okay here, don't save the old one, uh, because I was using for demo, and here our uh, project is ready. So what we need, we need a, a data flow, because we need to read the data from the source, uh, and uh, SSIS does provide uh, a lot of uh, connectors here, so one of the connector is called ODBC. So you're gonna search for ODBC, double click actually on the data flow and go to tools and now you search, it will provide you ODBC. So we will do ODBC source, double click and uh, I think it have already brought it here. So now we are all good here and I can uh, double click on ODBC, hit new and new. Now this is a list of those system data sources what we have created one of them. And remember that we have created MySQL SSIS link, so you choose that. Now that's our DNS name, MySQL SSIS link. We don't have to do anything here. Provide the username, TB user, and the password. You can always create parameters for username and password. So when you deploy to the next environment, your user my, my name might change and your password might change as well. So you can use it. Test connection is all successful. Hit OK, and now hit OK and table name or write a sql your choice so i'm gonna just uh, try to select the table i have one single table called customer two columns and see what happened here it is in uh, your uh, mysql unknown column name in the field name uh, that's very stupid and i have seen this error happening uh, so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the mysql and here i will say select start from a customer so I'm gonna go to columns now and it's working now. So it might have, will happen with you. So I'm not really sure what is uh, happening there. So now if we go back here and instead of saying SQL, we can do table and columns there still, uh, we have some problem with selecting the columns. Uh, so I use the query instead of uh, using uh, the list in the drop down. Also by using query, you have a choice uh, to select the columns what we need. Uh. So now we are all good, hit okay. And what we are going to do here, we are going to bring a multicast. Why? I just want to bring, a, I don't want to write this data to any other table or anything. I just want to show you how to read the data from the MySQL. I can bring all the DB source here, write to SQL server or create a file and all that. But it doesn't really matter. My goal was to show you how you make a connection to the all DB. Or what we can do, let's do uh, uh, this some fun thing. We are going to bring a all DB destination. Let me do that. Okay, so double click. And uh, here uh, I'm gonna go to tools and I'm gonna bring a uh, OLEDB destination. Oh, sorry, ODBC destination. Right here, connector. So I'm gonna use source and destination same. So we are gonna read from the source and write to the destination again. So let's see what happened. Uh, now, I, if I will take you to the MySQL and uh, read the data from here, Let's see what we get there. So it should be only one record, right? Now when we execute it, execute right there. So we have, a, this is a error. Table because MySQL does not exist. We have to change the database. So you run this query, now your database is changed. Now we are in the database so that's called TechResult IT and we see that it's one record now. In our SSIS package, I'm reading and writing to the same table. That's the very, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right thing, but anyways, uh, so we are gonna use the same connection. Select the table, and here you have a same table. Here you have row by row operation, or you can do batch. So it's your choice so if you wanna do batch like thousand and all that. ODBC is not that great in uh, writing a lot of records, uh, so thousand is fine. So go to columns here, and uh, see right there, unknown column name in the destination. So data flow, MySQL, ODBC driver, unknown column name name in the field. So that could be actually the problem with the column name. So let me go and see what is what is happening here. See column, maybe that's the problem. So what can we can do? I'm gonna call this one F name, okay? So we create a new table and uh, we create, uh, it's called customer new okay so we change our table name we are changing our column name 
and then we are going to write the values on. So let's see what happened here. Table is created, and now what we are going to do, we are going to insert the data into the new table. So maybe that's the one very actually smart thing because name is also used a lot of places with the, the reserve keyword. So that could be it. Okay, so now we have a new table. Let's go back here and fix our SSIS package. Cancel, ODBC, and here we will say customer underscore new. Okay, preview the data. Data is coming correct. And now I'm going to go actually and just select the table. Now we will see if uh, things are getting better. So that's our customer new. There's no new column name here. Still, we have the problem. It says column name F name. It's not bringing it full. So there is some problem. I don't know what's happening here. New preview. Let's see. Error unknown column F name in the field list. Okay, so let's go back and write our query. So we say, now if I preview, it's bringing full name right here. So that could be interesting. Okay, so we have F name here. And if I can go ahead and write it here. So row by row and uh, my destination table, I'm gonna go new and uh, map the columns, go to mapping. And still we have the problem. So by maybe we have this problem unknown column ODBC. Hmm. Let me do one thing. Let me go back uh, and use uh, the N, uh, Unicode driver instead of using NC. So let's go back here. We use uh, OTBC 32 bit. Yes. I have to do research on this uh, because uh, honestly, I don't know what is happening here. So maybe you guys are smart and uh, I am uh, really like not uh, knowing a lot of things here. Let's do ODBC Unicode driver here, hit finish. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call it a MySQL Unicode. Okay, so localhost, this is a, I don't know, this is a scenario where uh, you start a video in like finishing in five minutes and you end up in um, 100 years. So test connection, hit OK, hit OK. Now come back to your connection manager here. Let's uh, hit on drop down MySQL Unicode. Now refresh, select it again, provide the password, test connection, and we are all good. Let's go back here, preview, data is coming correct, columns, all good. If I will provide the, the table name here in the drop down and let me see what happened now. Now, wow. So you, you guys see that uh, the problem was with the Unicode and NC. So that's the problem. So you will, I will suggest you use the Unicode and uh, if you know what is happening here, go ahead and write me comments why I'm, I'm doing stupid uh, mistake and using NC and uh, Unicode. So maybe there's uh, something I need to know. Well, I will do some research on that anyways. So now let's go back here and write the data to the our destination. So I'm gonna go write the data to the new here and uh, go mapping is done. Now we will do and execute our SSIS package, right click, execute, and it's gonna execute just fine, I believe. So now it's uh, executing, it's reading the data from the same table, writing it to the same table. Let's go to the right here and uh, we should be all good here and see it has written to the data here now i want to take my words back i want to go back uh, and remember that we had a table where it says customer and there was a name column so i want to test that with the this unicode the driver as well so we want to make sure so the name keyword was reserve keyword is still problem or not see it's giving us blue so that that might be the issue last time i don't know with NC, maybe it is a problem. With the, the Unicode, it's not a problem. So I'm going to go back right here. And I'm going to make some changes quickly right there. Go back here. And uh, here, I'm going to go connection. Go to the table name. Fine. Here is my table. Remember, customer. And uh, we don't have any problem with the name column either. So we are all good. So use uh, the Unicode. Now, do not use NC. That's one thing we learned here, but uh, test it out. Uh, don't just follow blindly. Like uh, if Amir said that uh, it's gonna work. Uh, so I will say test with you all the data, verify it, and then uh, use it. Uh, so right here, name, so it's all good now. 
we are going to read from the same table and just uh, put it there. So let me run the package. Now this is going to the customer table. So let's go. It's completing and uh, hit uh, this. Now this should have uh, two records. Uh, and looking good that uh, the two records are there. So I thank you very much for watching and uh, I appreciate uh, your time. And here, uh, remember that uh, we are going to use, uh, when you're going to use the ODBC, use the ODBC Unicode. Do not use the NC. Okay. Unicode. All good for now. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.